Hi, Tom from bkmnutrition.com and today I want to talk about the friction that's preventing you from achieving your goals in life, whether it be for health and fitness, nutrition, your workouts, or generally just leading a healthier lifestyle. Um, in my book, Target Lean, I talk about this element called the friction. Now, the, the friction is not something you can see. It's an invisible force that acts upon you, but it's not a physical force in, in a lot of the time. A lot of the time it's mental, a lot of the time it's situational, and it's, it's this element, this force, sort of like in Star Wars, the force really, that pushes against you to stop you achieving the goals that you want to achieve. Now, there's a really good book called The uh, the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It's well worth a read, and he talks about a similar phenomenon called the resistance, and the resistance, he, he applies it generally to life, because in that book, he's talking about achieving your lifelong ambitions, your lifelong goals, and being the best person you can be. And the resistance, as he refers to it, is the thing that prevents you getting there. Getting there. It's a self-doubt, that sort of thing. The friction, as I talk about it in, in terms of the health and fitness element, is the same type of phenomenon. It's the thing that stops you achieving your goals. So if we have, say, a health and fitness goal, say of walking 20 minutes a day, if we're going to walk on a sunny day where it's nice and warm, there's no rain, it's, it's a good atmosphere, it's a, a good environment, the birds are tweeting everything else, it's actually nice to be on a 20 minute walk. Well actually what we might do is actually do 30 or 40 minutes because it's so nice to be in that environment. So actually accomplishing that task is very easy because the environment is so easy. What happens the next day though when it's raining and cold and it's windy and, and you still gotta do your 20 minute walk, actually it doesn't seem that appealing now. But the problem is the task, the accomplishing the 20 minute walk, has actually not changed. It's the environment around that task which has changed. And the friction is that environment. So in the sunny day, the friction is low. On the windy and wet and cold day, the friction is high. But the task to accomplish is actually no harder than it was before, it's just that the environment has changed. Now we could put a coat on, put some decent walking shoes on, put a hoodie on or whatever, and go out and do that 20 minute walk. Yeah, it'd be more difficult, but the task is still accomplishable. Okay, now let's say for example, it's thunder and lightning and you know, massive hailstones the size of cars. Okay, that's an element of friction which is so high and obviously it's dangerous to your potentially to your life, so you wouldn't go and do that. So, so I do appreciate there's an element of scale here, but most of the time, what presents in terms of friction is actually just minor elements that conspire against us. And what happens is our brain processes that information and says, that task's gonna be a little bit harder today. Shall we not do it? And that is the self-doubt that comes in. That is the thing that, that um, presents to you. And because if you're not thinking about it, if you're just thinking, oh, you know, I just don't feel like a walk today, then immediately you switch off, you put off. So in order to, uh, to overcome this friction, so to get your task done, you need to be aware of what the long-term goal is. Now, the long-term goal is not just walk for 20 minutes a day. That's just a, something we do, you know, to walk for 20 minutes a day. I could walk for 20 minutes in my house. You know, that's, I don't have to walk outside. The purpose of going outside and accomplishing that task is to build up a healthy lifestyle fit and, and fitness orientated mindset. Because if we go for 20 minutes walk, say first thing in the morning, what we do is not that the 20 minute walk is not the big accomplishment, okay? Anybody can do a 20 minute walk in the house. The 20 minute walk outside in the nature, it helps you to create this fitness mindset in the morning. You're making steps towards a, a healthier lifestyle, healthy fitness. When you come back, even if you're soaked to the skin, that sense of accomplishment that I have done my 20 minute walk today, I've started the day the right way. Because you started the day with a, with a positive mindset, a positive sort of health and fitness orientated mindset, you continue to make those decisions for a health and fitness mindset through the rest of the day. So for example, when it comes down to your nutrition, because you've done your walk in the morning, no, I'm in a health and fitness mindset today, I'm gonna to eat a banana instead of a chocolate bar. So you've made another positive decision towards your, your long-term goal. When it comes to going to the gym in the evening, your mates at the, uh, the work will say, oh, don't, don't go to the gym today, come out, we're going out for a, for a drink at the pub or whatever. Okay, it might be nice to go out for a drink with your pub with your mates, but you can do it on the weekend when you're not training or another day where you're not training. If you've got a scheduled gym session to go to, you say, no, I won't go because I've got to go to the gym. I'm looking towards my healthy lifestyle. And they might rib you and go, oh, whatever, whatever. That's absolutely fine because your mindset is to get to a healthy and fitness lifestyle. You can go to socializing at other times when you, when you put it into your diet or whatever. If you've got it in your diary to go training, 
go and train, do that thing. Whatever the distraction that presents it to you, you need to think about the bigger goal. Because if you've done the walk in the morning, you've made the positive decisions of your life to, to eat the right foods in the day, you go to the gym in the evening, you come home feeling accomplished, well, potentially, excuse me, you might not snack as much in the evening on the sofa, because that's what a lot of us do. I do that in the evening, I snack on my sofa watching TV. Um, there's another video about that if you wanna watch that, it's about allocating your snacks. Um, but the, the fact is, because you made all those healthy decisions in the day, snacking on the sofa, well, that's actually, okay, that's not a bad thing to do because you're taking a bit of time out for yourself. And as long as you control that snacking, you've still made a positive decision. Whereby, let's look at the other side of things. It's uh, rainy and wet, so you don't go for your 20 minute walk in the day. So you've, you've allowed the friction to overcome you. Because you've allowed it once to overcome you, you go for the rest of the day, okay, you get the banana or the chocolate bar decision. Well, I've, I've already sacked off my diet today because I've not done the 20 minute walks. Oh, I just have the chocolate bar because why not? Because I'm not feeling as if I've really accomplished anything today. So you have the chocolate bar. Then after work, your mates go, oh, do you want to come to the gym for a Oh, well, I'm already in the mindset that I've already not done everything. And, and I've already made two decisions in my life today, which are which have allowed the friction to overcome me. Um, so yeah, let's go to the pub. So you end up going to the pub, uh, having a few drinks or whatever. Maybe not in COVID, but you know, because it's COVID at the moment. But um, yeah, you see, see where see where it's going, and then you come home, and because you've not gone to the gym, you don't feel as if you've accomplished any health or fitness things. You end up just snacking a load of Haribo's and peanut butter and stuff on the sofa. So all in all, that day is a bit of a wipeout, and it's all because you've allowed the friction to overcome you on the first action you've taken that day. So in terms of friction, it's not that one thing that's that it's going to affect your life. It's the whole cascade of things. All these small decisions we make, either are we gonna make the right decision, we're gonna make the wrong decision in terms of our health and fitness. If we continually make the wrong decisions, we're pushing ourselves away from where we want to be and we're pushing ourselves back to potentially where we were before, before we started this lifestyle change. And that's what happens with the majority of people who start diets because it's never, you never do a diet and go, oh, do you know what, I'm getting really well on my diet, yeah, whatever, sod this, and I'm gonna do, just eat bad, badly again. You know, that doesn't happen. You don't get people to do really well on the diet and all of a sudden go, yeah, I'm just gonna eat crap now. That doesn't happen. What happens is you eat well on your diet and then some of these things come into play. So then you start to have the odd snack here and there. And it's all right because my diet's generally okay anyway, so I can afford the odd snack. And then you don't, it, you obviously don't log it in your calories because that would be okay if you did log it in your calories. You don't. So then, oh, it's okay because I can have this other snack because that's because I'm eating, 8% of the time. And you make excuses for why you can have these things, why you don't need to go to the gym, all these things. And all these things is playing into friction's hands. It's like this, oh yes, great, I've lured you away from, from where you want to be and, and allowed you to take the easy route. And that's what the friction does. It pushes you towards the easy road, the path of least resistance. And we all know what the path of least resistance is, because that's sat on the sofa playing Nintendo all night, eating Pringles. Because that's what I've done sometimes when I'm feeling a bit like I'm in a day off. That's what I've done. I just said, well, I'm going to have a day off and I'm going to sit on the sofa all day and eat Pringles. But I've taken the path of leaf resistance. I haven't gone to the gym. I haven't gone training. I haven't done some work for that day. I've just taken a day off. Now, that's a planned day off. Sometimes I am human. I just have a day where I think, do you know what? I just cannot be bothered today. And I'm just going to have a day off and just eat loads of food and uh, slouch on the sofa watching TV or Netflix. That's acceptable. That's acceptable to happen. You're a human. That's acceptable to do that sort of thing. But so what we need to recognize is we've had that day, we've done that, the next day we need to get back onto, we need to get back onto what we're doing, get back into our routine. The problem is most people don't do that. They think that because they've had one day off, that's the end of their diet. They've allowed friction to overcome them for one day. So why bother? Why bother staying on the diet? And then they've gone down the path of properly least resistance where they've gone back to all the easy things they used to do, which is what got them into that situation in the first place. You see this happen a lot with people who do diets, they do really well for a few couple of weeks, then they have one or two incidences which sort of put their day out and then they think, right, well, do you know what, I can't bother anymore. And then they just go back to where they were and all of a sudden they're back to gaining all the weight back again. And this happens again with fitness and nutrition. People who are doing like um, fitness programs, they get this brand new fitness program from their trainer. They're, they're really into it for a couple of days and they have like a, maybe a, a, a couple of days where they've got an injury, like a, they overtrain for a little bit, they've got like a, I don't know, quad injury or whatever. So they can't train for two days, but then when they come back, it's like, oh, I just can't be bothered again. I can't get back into the routine because they've allowed the friction to overcome them and allowed that self-doubt to come into play. Oh, why am I even doing this? I'm not seeing any results, you know? Results come after months and months and months of actual consistent application. Results in your physique and in your um, 
in your nutrition in terms of weight loss, that takes time to accumulate. Now, all these quick fix diet plans which people sell will lose weight quickly, so you'll see results quickly. The problem is they are so full of restriction and stress, the friction level is massive on those diets. So actually, it doesn't take a lot for, for you to come off that diet and to, and to, and to go away from it. I talk about this in another, in, in, in another uh, thing, I call about the prison diet, and then once you escape the prison, you don't want to go back there. So the friction is so high, you can't face going back there. The perfect way to do this is to just change your life 1% at a time. So rather than putting yourself in this prison of diet or grueling training regimes where you're doing like six hours cardio a day or you know, two, two hours weight sessions a day, whatever, you know, rather than doing that, you shift yourself 1%. So if we can see the goal in line, what we need to think about is, right, well, I don't want to run blindly towards that goal because there's obviously going to be some things, some friction elements coming from the side, which is going to knock me off my spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit slowly. It's going to take more time, but because I'm taking more time and I'm moving things a little bit slower and I'm changing things a little bit more slowly, it's easy for my mind to accommodate that. It's easy for me to see the friction coming from either side where I can identify what's going to come up and then I'll get to where I want to be. And I can analogize this to say, crossing a road or crossing a river if you just went straight across the road and more, more likely you're going to get splattered if you took your time crossing the road and just used the say islands dotted around the road to go from one step to another step to another step and you would get across that say six lane motorway rather than just trying to run across uh, blindly um, it, it's that thing building up steps small steps so i talk about one percent changes so rather than we're going to go from eating what the foods we normally ate to complete vegan or keto diet you know that is a massive shift and you're going to get squashed doing that if you went to if you went from say if you want to eat more plants because everyone could do with eating more plants really i i try and eat more plants in my daily life but i'm not a vegan i never will be a vegan but i could eat more plants in my in my life i could be healthier in, in my diet so what i what i started doing is do you know what actually i watched the game changers thing and while the game changers um uh movie is actually a whole load of shit because there's so much disinformation in there it's unbelievable it's so much so much rubbish in there so don't don't think you need to do a vegan diet to be able to do battle ropes for two hours constantly or something like that no, but what all it did give me is a sense of do you know what yeah i should be eating more plants you know so it actually did help me but i recognized that it was you know, there's a lot of like dubious stuff in there. Um, so, um, so if you've watched Game Changers, if you or if you haven't, you go and watch it. Then, you know, please do take it with a pinch of salt. But, but ironically, this case this is this case in point because people who did watch the Game Changers thing, it's about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, from the timing of this filming, they watched the Game Changers, and all of a sudden, they're like, "Yeah, I'm going to go vegan because it's the best thing in the world." And then a month later, how are you get on your vegan diet? Oh, I can't do it because it's too hard. You know, I started it, it was all right, it's too hard. Yeah, because you try to change too much too quickly, you know, and that's the whole thing about this. People try and change too much too quickly. I'm not doubting the health implications of eating more plants or even being a vegan, but you shouldn't be a vegan to think about is the way to lose weight. The way to lose weight is calorie deficit and then managing that calorie deficit, eating more plants and reducing intake of like, like junk food, essentially, potentially is going to help you with that because you're going to reduce your calories. So if you wanted to change your life, and this is how, how I change my life, is I went from uh, eating not a lot of veg and stuff, because I don't really like veg, to trying to accommodate little bits of veg. So what you could do is if you wanted to move towards a more plant-based diet, then you could just have one plant-based meal a week. So you have like one, one um, I think it's called like meat-free Monday or whatever they call it. So one day of the week you have meals which are meat-free. That's quite easy because you can plan for that. You can go, right, on Monday I'm gonna have my, my whatever breakfast, um, let's say we're going to have like a vegan breakfast, vegan sausage or whatever um, breakfast, or we're going to have um, a fruit salad and some, uh, and some dairy-free yogurt. Okay, so we're going to have that. Um, and then it depends on your definition of meat-free really, because I, I don't really count dairy as, as meat, but vegans do. Um, so you could have, say, fruit and a yogurt for breakfast. And then for lunch, you have like a bean chili or something like that. For an evening meal, you can have like a chickpea curry, something like that, and then maybe a snack in the evening, you know, whatever. Whatever you want to have, but you, but you take meat out for that day, that's quite easy to plan for. And actually you can make a quite a sort of ceremony and quite an eventful day out of that. Go, oh, yeah, I'm doing meat free Monday. I'm really getting into eating healthier. Because you have that one day a week and you start to get used to eating and preparing and getting those, those meals in, into your diet, it actually then becomes easier to go, okay, I'm gonna have meat free Thursday as well. So I'm gonna have meat free Monday, meat free Thursday. So two days of the week, you start to have uh, meat free. So you have plant-based diet, uh, Monday, plant based diet, Thursday. But what also happens is during the rest of the week, because you're starting to enjoy veg a bit more, then you start to have more veg in your meals with your meat on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So actually, just having that one day or the two days a week we have the meat free days, you're not vegan and you can't say that you're a vegan, but you've got a more plant based diet. And because you 
having these two days or one day where you're actually having more plants, you're reducing the friction for having it every day of the week, but you're actually going with the flow a little bit. So the rest of the week, days of the week, so what well, do you know, actually I quite fancy having a salad with my steak today, or I quite fancy having um, some more bean or bean, bean salad with um, this, or I'm gonna have more potatoes, or I'm gonna have more, you know, green and more spinach or whatever. You start to think about other ways you can incorporate into your other non plant-based diet. So, so the meat days, basically, the days you have the meat, you, you start to think about, well, actually, I would I'd quite like to have that plant-based food with that as well. So actually then it becomes very easy to shift and make that shift. And it might be that you end up having every day of the week as um, sort of plant-based and you have just like one meat day, which is Saturday or Sunday, whatever. You might shift completely, but it takes small steps. If you try and do that from the start, so you went from like steak every day to trying to oh, plant-based every day, that's gonna be so difficult because it's so much resistance, it's so much friction. You're trying to fly in the face of what your normal daily routine is. If you change it 1% and move 1% each time, it makes it a lot easier because once you start doing it one day, it's easier to start doing it for two days, easier to start doing it for three days. And this is what people don't get when they try and start some new exercise routine or some diet or whatever. They're trying to do everything all at once. You can't do everything all at once. You've still got your life, you still gotta to go to work, you still got your kids, you still gotta, all the other things you did, and now you're trying to change this massive thing in life, which is your exercise or your diet. That's not gonna happen. You've got to change it in small steps in order to achieve the big results. And that's where I work with clients. I say to people, right, you know, let, let's look at the foods you like to eat, okay? How can we, how can we accommodate the, the foods that you like to eat into a calorie deficit? Now, once we've done that, once we've got the meat into a calorie deficit, right, now how can we make those meals a little bit harder? So if they want to eat, they, they want to eat McDonald's every day, they can do that. All they have to do is restrict into a calorie deficit. And that has been done. Uh, people have done the, the McDonald's diet within their calorie deficit and lost weight and improved their health markers. Done it with ice cream, done it with Twinkies, as well documented. You go and search on Google or whatever for it. And I actually do list those things in my book as well. So you can, so if you want to look to lose weight and you eat McDonald's every day, the first step is to eat within a calorie deficit. So let's take the four McDonald's a day, let's take the three McDonald's a day, that'll take them to your calorie deficit. Then once you start doing that and you start to see the results in terms of the weight coming off, you start to feel a little bit better. Okay, how about we change one of those McDonald's a day to a, to a home um, cooked meal or whatever. Okay, let's do that. So change that, okay. Once we've done that for a bit more, okay, you can see the benefits of that. Okay, how about we change our breakfast? We don't go and have a sausage and egg McMuffin. We instead, we go and have um, some fruit and yogurt. Okay, let's try that. So we do that. And all of a sudden, you're making these small shifts and six months later down the line, you have McDonald's maybe once a week and the rest of the week, you're doing home-cooked meals. But you wouldn't have done that if you hadn't made those small shifts. It's not about this massive shift. That's why programs like The Biggest Loser and these sort of Veganuary and all these things, they never work because they're fads. They're small, focused time periods where we're gonna do everything right for that time period. And at the end of that time period, right, off we go. How many people you know who do Veganuary and end up in February, can't wait to eat steak. Yeah, you just undo all that stuff you've done and probably, what you've done for that whole month where you've had Veganuary, you've probably started to hate it and start to really look forward to steak. So what happens is when you come off Veganuary, you go, sod that plant-based stuff, I'm gonna go straight into, into steaks every day. And then you're back into where you were and maybe the health benefits you've had from eating more plant-based diet for, for January has actually been undone. But what if you did Veganuary properly and just had one vegan meal a week or two vegan meals a day, whatever. You know, you, you accomplish one or two meals in the week where you said, well, I'm having a vegan or plant-based meal for that evening meal. That'd be quite easy to do. And by the end of January, you've accommodated that into your diet and you, and you actually yeah, I quite like having that. It's quite a nice change. And then you can continue that forward and you've made, just made those small steps. So that's what, that's what I talk about the, the friction and overcoming those, those friction elements. So, so changing 1% each time, the small steps, that's what's gonna help you get there. The other thing I use with clients is something called the vote sheet. There, there is a thing on my, if you go on my website, it's called uh, I Vote Lean. So become nutrition forward slash I Vote Lean. The vote sheet is basically logging all the um, the good things that you've done that day. So, so you may have two columns. You have votes for my new life, votes for my previous life. So votes for my new life would be, I had a plant-based meal on Monday night, not a steak, yeah? Votes for my previous life was, uh, I had um, three chocolate biscuits for lunch. If you normally have three chocolate biscuits for lunch. So it's things that you haven't changed, you did or you, you did uh, before, and then things that you, uh, that you have changed. And what happens is you start off with both columns and probably both columns will start um, filling up at the right around about the same um, uh, uh, time period or the same amount of entries. And then as you go further forward, 
the, the votes for your, lead, for your previous life starts to diminish and the votes for your uh, life you want to lead, they start to increase. Now I've done this successfully with clients before. I had one guy who completely changed his lifestyle and you can see on his vote sheet, you can see I got into my, um, uh, I got into a medium size of uh, trousers today, which is a massive accomplishment because the guy lost like 40 kilos or something. So a major uh, vote for him today was, well, a vote for him on this day was I got into my, um, my, my I got into a medium pair of jeans, which I've never done, that sort of thing. And you start, and because you've wrote them all down, when you look at it, it encourages you more to do the good things rather than to go back to where you were because you can see all these things accum accumulating up. But if you do have a vote for your previous life, that's fine. Because all you do is say, like, well, why did that happen? Why did I relapse and have whole whole chocolate orange that day? Okay, what are the things leading up to that? And let's see how we can change that. Because that's going to be a frictional element that comes in that stops you um, from doing what you want to do and pushes you back. So why did I have a chocolate orange all day? Oh, I had a long day at work, so I was stressed. Okay, when we come, so we can create a thing. If I have a long day at work and I come home stressed, right, I'm going to have, straight away, I'm going to have a, a low calorie snack in the fridge. So when I come home, I'm not then hungry when I come home. Come home, eat the snack, not hungry, so I don't go for the cherry chocolate orange. That's, a, that's something I've used with clients before. So it's one of these things you can do, you can think about how can I change these friction elements? How can I work with the friction to push it so it's not that much of an impact on me? So all these things you can, you can, you can, uh, you can use to adjust. So, um, so I sort of ranted on for a little bit there, um, but it's really important that you understand that that friction loves lethargy. It loves the fact that you don't want to do anything. It loves the fact that your mind is geared towards actually the path of least resistance, and that's what it will prey on. So if you are trying to change something in your life, make sure you recognise that these things are going to happen. You're going to get issues which come up, which push you back to where you were going to be. Think the first couple of times it happens, you probably will get pushed there. But every time it happens, write it down. Why did that happen? What things led up to that happening? What can I do to change it? Use some of the elements I've described in the video. And then you can think about, well, when that happens next time, right, this is what I can see that happening. This is what I'm going to do to counteract it. And you'll find that very quickly, these things that are friction elements, they actually don't become friction elements at all. All they, all they do is they just, there's a signal to move on to a different, a different path. That's all it will be. And you'll find that very quickly you can change your habits. Do that 1%, change those 1% every time, and that's the way you accomplish the task. There's no friction really in that 1%, but if you try and do everything all at once, it's massive friction. You won't accomplish that task, not long term anyway. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you got something from it. I know I did go off on a tangent a little bit. Um, I tend to do these videos in one take, so I don't go back and edit and go, oh, I should have said that at that point. So maybe I repeated myself, maybe went over and I'm on a bit of a tangent, but that's what, um, that's what I'm about in these videos. I try and be authentic and not editing it so it's perfect. Um, so I hope that was helpful. If it was, please comment below. Um, if you have a suggestion for another video you'd like me to comment, please let me know. Um, if there's someone who will benefit from listening to this, if someone you, you know that always fails on their diet, shoot in this video, it might help them to get, their, uh, to get a new idea on what they're doing. And, uh, and if you've done Veganuary, because it is the 1st of February filming this video, if you've done Veganuary, how do you get on? Are you dying for a steak now that you've done uh, 30 days or 31 days of no steaks? Let me know. You might have benefited from just having one plant-based meal in a day. Okay, um, thanks for listening and uh, or watching, and I'll see you next time.